Hi, uh, we're back again. Uh, we just wanted to say a few brief words on uh, the history of uh, our people uh, in this country uh, and even in the world. Um, we just want to say that uh, and then bring it up into a contemporary time today. What's going on with the um, uh, pol injustice with uh, police killing and different things like that. Uh, we want to talk about the uh, Emmett Till crime legislation. Uh, we want to talk about all of that. But we'll start with, you know, coming over on slave ships. Um, coming over on slave ships, uh, we're really, when we came here, some of us were already here. That's fine. There are books you can get and see native people, black in Sydney, Portier. Yes, yeah, some of us were already here, and some of us came on slave ships. But many of us came on slave ships. And the bottom line to that is that uh, when we got here, there was a genocidal practice against us. Our lives weren't worth more than what they paid for us as slaves. And then obviously when we could reproduce ourselves in slavery and, and have children who were again born slaves, the property of the slaver, who owned you in particular, and the woman that you were uh, cohabitating with. So the bottom line is that there was a lot of, uh, life was pretty cheap on the plantation. Uh, over and above, if you were really valued uh, piece, uh, some people uh, uh, of labor, some people uh, obviously um, uh, would uh, have a situation where they could afford to lose something like that if it set a good example to the others. Uh, for future so-called uh, insurrection, or if it's not insurrection, a slave rebellion, at least uh, some sort of work stoppage or slow, slowing down the work process or the things that they would try to do to get back at the uh, slave owner. Uh, it could be something like that, but the bottom line is what we have is um, people sometimes would get killed if the slave owner could afford it if, uh, if, if, if the loss of it wasn't worth to him more than the value of keeping people in check, like we said, for future references. So, and some people couldn't. And they didn't kill their slaves, they just sell them off. Or they sell off his children, or his wife, you know, so things like that. But many of them were killed. Many of them were killed. Let's not, you know, the estimates that over uh, 100 million were killed over the centuries since we got here uh, of, of our people who came off those slave ships and even going down into this day, let's not forget how many were killed throughout history after emancipation, uh, even through in reconstruction, after every war where they have their uniforms on and so forth, they were still killed. Uh, after you got out of the, um, after you were emancipated, it came down to you being now um, free from the plantation system. But now, if you're incarcerated, once again, you would be enslaved, as we saw with chain gains, forced prison labor, building railroads, building all kinds of things in the latter 19th century. A lot of our people were arrested uh, on vagrancy charges, a loitering. Of course, they didn't have a job or a place to live. They just walked off a plantation. But this was the system. They knew what they were doing. Today, we have more people incarcerated then uh, I believe it was 1852, I'm not sure, but uh, whichever year they had the height of slavery, we have more people incarcerated in this country right now than all the slaves in America right before the Civil War. So that's, or at any time. So that's very interesting. Um, the per capita numbers are ridiculous. That goes for our Hispanic uh, and Native American brothers and sisters as well. Uh, but they're really killing us. It's a genocidal act, um, putting a lot of our people in jail after crime legislation in the 70s, bringing drugs into the community. We don't have the planes to go and get these drugs from uh, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, or from Afghanistan, where the heroin comes from, or Peru, or Colombia, where the cocaine comes from, to manufacture it, and all these different things. It's not us doing it. But in media, in the news agency, they blame us for it, which makes Jennifer Seidmore 
uh, viable. And I say that because a lot of times we're killed by the police uh, in the society and they get away with it. Even shooting unarmed people in the back and they get away with it. it it's no question. I know the police have a powerful union. Uh, some police uh, are, are good uh, as far as law abiding themselves and they have a dangerous job. We recognize, appreciate that. But at the same time, some of them are just murderous thugs with a badge. And then if you're in the organization and you tolerate him, well, any organization is only as strong as its weakest link. So that's not good if they're committing genocide against our people. Some may not care. But the bottom line is it's happening and it needs to be changed. That's the bottom line. So, um, you know, an Asian person gets a uh, hit in the streets, they get legislation, they get federal money, they get all these different things, in addition to what was already on the books. But for us, we're getting slaughtered. Uh, now, of course, we're killing each other also. We talk about that. Because again, they're bringing the drugs into the country, they bring the weapons into the, uh, uh, and then the drugs land in the poorest neighborhoods. That doesn't make sense. And then the guns are land over there as well. And the next thing you know, we have a uh, killing. Of course, they already took out all the uh, industry. They took out the uh, free certifications in public schools. They took out many things. And then they brought the drugs in. Uh, remember, uh, in the 1960s uh, going back, most black communities in the country had, didn't have baby mamas. You didn't see that back then. There might have been one or two in every society, uh, community of the society, but the bottom line is you came from a father and a mother, working class family, the mother stayed at home, was a homemaker. This is what happened, it was a different economy back then, but they still were killing us. They were still killing us. And now for the first time we have an Emmett Till bill, which they passed, and here's the hypocrisy here. They passed this as the first anti-lynching bill. We never got one ever. This is the first one. How watered down is it? They name it after Emmett Till, but one of the parties to his murder, Cynthia Bryan, is still alive, and they won't even, now they can't, they want to indict her for murder, fine. Go indict her under the uh, laws of this uh, new bill, which you named after Emmett Till. They won't even do that, this Biden administration. So it's pretty sad and pathetic. I think they don't value our lives. And we will talk more on this later.